Начинаем с вашего разрешения. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we can start our section. I'm very happy to see you all today. And I believe that we'll, our work will be successful. I believe it is important to highlight one important thing. We need, I believe that we should work and deal only with the most important aspects of our speeches and the most important ideas. So could you please mention uh, where do you come from? What are your top scientific priorities? What are the most important aspects that you're interested in? Uh, I would like to remind you that you have only 10 minutes for your statements. We will remind you about the timing during your speech. And then we'll have some time for questions. Please put them in the chat below so that everybody could see them. And if we'll have many questions, probably we'll answer them at the, at the very end of our conference. Then we'll listen to other statements. We'll follow the logic of the program that we have. And also, I would like to remind you about some technical moments. Please turn off your microphones. Use them only when you are delivering your speech or asking a question. And a notice for those people who are interested in getting certificates. Please don't forget to register and go via the link. I believe that you have the all necessary contacts, the contacts of our special te uh, technical specialists. I hope that everything will work well. And another thing I would like to ask you, maybe we may have some internet connection troubles. So if this will happen, we'll move to the next speaker so i believe we can start i would like to invite our first guest marina fedorovna Petronova, our competency based assessments in legal english you're welcome i work in andinsova Dimo. University, I would like to introduce a research considering the topic of competency based assessment in legal English based on the International Legal English Certificate exam. This is a very important topic because for the last 30 years, Europe and Russia in particular have been modernizing their rules and standards in the field of education. Traditional knowledge were updated and now the educational process is based on competency-based assessment and it affected the results and caused certain differences in this control and assessment systems but still we see that the process of assessment is intended to check knowledge so we continue checking knowledge of our students we check the knowledge they have. We believe it is very important to introduce new competency-based assessments. How is it possible? Competence is, is a particular characteristic that is demonstrated in person's behavior and actions. So the existing forms of assessment should be intended to control this behavior and these actions that a person makes. So some traditional forms of assessment like tests, quizzes, 
or some tasks that check the language knowledge of our students can be unnecessary and useless if we are trying to assess students' competency. We based our research on the federal standards of education and the standards of education of Mgimo University. And as a result, we defined the most important aspects of communication and specific areas where students should have particular skills and knowledge. They are as follows. The conduct of negotiations, participation in discussions, different professional uh, written forms of interaction, CVs and other forms of written work. It's necessary to highlight that the forms of assessment should correspond to the particular tasks that students are doing. So, for example, if the top priority of our students is practicing communication using irrelevant tasks like tests and quizzes can be wrong. In other words, we should test particular skills and knowledge of our students only via similar forms of activity. The ILEC exam is one of the most widespread forms of examination and assessment. It consists of several tasks of several parts. Here you can see an example of a reading part task. Student is supposed to read a text. And by the way, I want to highlight that I based my research on two types of particular aspects. What I'm trying to say is that I based my research on practicality and functionality of the future professionals, professionalists on their future forms of activity. And I paid special attention to this aspect of their work. So this particular text was taken from a legal English type of text. And the task that follows supposes that a student has to choose proper answers for particular questions basing on the knowledge that he got from the text. There are four options. So there is a chance of simple guessing. Moreover, it, the student is supposed to remember something that he learned from the text. It doesn't actually demonstrate his knowledge. It doesn't correspond to future professionalists in the field of law. So it doesn't, it isn't connected with their future work and professional activity. The next part is listening. Student is supposed to listen to a dialogue, to a conversation between two people. It is an authentic speech. So it is a speech between a lawyer and his client. It's very important to emphasize the fact that this is actually connected with the real work that lawyers do. But anyway, again, we see that the tasks are actually tests that they are that they imply choosing correct answers. They are similar to the reading part. Then goes a writing section. A student is supposed to give a written answer to a particular question. This task is connected with specialist future professional activity, so it is authentic and I believe that the form is correct. It deals with written form of interaction and communication and it is good for checking students' professional skills. 
It is a competency-based assessment. The next part is speaking. Students are supposed to ask his future client about some particular questions connected with his professional activity. This is also a relevant task. It deals with the lawyer's future professional activity. The form of assessment is correct, and this task is actually intended to check students' speaking skills. So we found out that reading and listening aspects of this exam are intended to check particular competences of students and these competences can't be checked or can be checked via checking students knowledge and skills and we believe that they can be recommended Communicative competence, competency is a very complicated aspect of the whole process of education. It's necessary to remember that we should base our approach on particular practical aspects of future activity of professional professionals and not all tasks actually correspond to the existing standards, to the standards of future professional activity in real life. And it signifies the necessity of further research. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I think we can turn off the presentation. Do you have any questions? I think that there were no questions concerning the particular criteria of assessment. And how do you believe this whole system of assessment? How can this future students be assessed? practically what parameters are you planning to follow well in general we didn't take this into account because this was not the main topic of our research and practical assessment is a separate topic but in general i believe that we can base our future system on particular types of oral interaction of aspects of communication and introduce different standards. For example, if we're talking about negotiations, we can take into account some particular traditional criteria like accuracy and fluence, fluent, fluent speaking skills of our future students. We also can include some professional criteria. It is also an opportunity for us to assess students' knowledge. So they, so these criteria can be complex and take into account various aspects of students' education, like their knowledge, skills, practical skills, skills of communication. All these aspects are interconnected. Thank you very much. If there are no more questions, you can ask while well, she is not with us. Then Natalia Petrovna Khamikova. Natalia Petrovna, you're welcome. Speak about the scientific academic discourse as an important path of forming non-linguistics students into cultural competence in foreign languages. 
не филологов. Я начну свое сообщение, подчеркну, что важность овладения видами речевой деятельности, непосредственно связанной с осуществлением научных и прикладных исследований, In uh, training uh, skills, we base ourselves on international standards. Why? Uh, because uh, processes uh, taking place uh, in the world are global. The market of intellectual products, the market of talent is becoming global. This means uh, that The world needs uh, specialists uh, uh, who are capable of navigating the international information landscape. We believe that these skills are crucial for the professional standing of a young professional. Information is a starting point of everything. Involvement of uh, students uh, into scientific research, even as they uh, go through their training courses, uh, is uh, the mainstream uh, both in Russia and in Europe. It serves uh, yet another purpose, uh, formation of a thinking personality, a personality that would be uh, capable of rational thinking. This is not just wishful thinking. This uh, is a conclusion that we came to through practical experience. In fact, such skills are required everywhere across uh, Europe, in Russia, and in many other countries uh, as a condition uh, for a diploma. In France, uh, it's called uh, Memagdemetries. Uh, in Russia, it is called the Certificat Competency, and so on. Foreign language uh, training uh, professionals uh, are becoming uh, more open uh, towards uh, professional uh, academic discourses. And I uh, can uh, tell you that for a fact. I have uh, been uh, Uh, for a long time exposed uh, to the French uh, speaking uh, student and academic milieu. Indeed, it is uh, critical uh, that the students uh, can write a reference paper, uh, can write an essay, uh, make a presentation of various formats. My personal experience convinces me of uh, the, in this conclusion. This conclusion has been confirmed by the research of uh, Professor Kunitskaya. She is the founder of a new academic discipline, uh, so-called academic essay. It is a special skill that needs uh, training And it is a type of skill uh, that is essential for a budding professional, a budding specialist. Every student must be competent uh, in a certain sphere and must put his knowledge on the paper, share his knowledge with the other people by writing essays and other written formats. The strategy of cohesion and uh, competence uh, is uh, the uh, alpha and omega of uh, academic, academic discourse. Did you receive the file? I am coming to that. I will demonstrate uh, several transparencies. All right. Five minutes, you have only five minutes left. 
Please show us the first transparency it, uh, as a long text, rather longish. This is a list of uh, cognitive uh, competencies that are needed uh, to generate a research paper in a foreign language. First point, navigating information. This includes uh, choosing the subject matter, motivation, compilation of uh, sources, formulation of a hypothesis and uh, objectives of research. Next comes uh, generation of new knowledge, proposals. This is done on the basis of an induction and deduction uh, method as a result of applying personal uh, creative skills. A third point is uh, generation of a coherent text. I suggest uh, we begin uh, with uh, easy subject matters uh, as a, a training ground. Uh, this is done uh, through a series of exercises of an increasing complexity, including cognitive uh, exercises uh, and the exercises that train a feeling of uh, novelty, of new knowledge, separation of old knowledge from new knowledge. Next stage is the formulation of sentences and phrases, a typical grammar that is used in uh, putting across the argument and uh, uh, bringing across uh, evidence. Uh, replication, uh, explanation, all of these uh, micro genres are extremely important. Uh, the strategy of coherence is the next uh, exercise because the text uh, must be coherent from start to the end. Presentations usually are written in lay language uh, that would be accessible to a broad uh, listenership. This means uh, the author must be able to decode uh, academic language into lay language. And last but not least, I say that acquisition of uh, skills of uh, mastering uh, discourse and uh, oral speech and written uh, texts is extremely important uh, for career growth, for personal improvement, and uh, staking one's uh, standing uh, in the uh, academic or professional community. We should start with general academic skills, general textual skills, followed by articulation of academic thinking, academic writing. Mastering explication, comparisons, introduction, commenting, proof. So uh, this is the essence of my proposals. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Natalia Petrovna. Any questions to Natalia Petrovna? I think this was a booster vaccine for our discussion today. When uh, you've been uh, making your story, I uh, uh, remembered um, my experience uh, of uh, 40 years ago. In Russian universities, we had a practice of uh, defending a thesis uh, in a foreign language. Usually it was first uh, written in Russian, uh, 
and later translated into English. Is there anything like this uh, today? Thank you for your question. I believe uh, these are completely different assignments. Writing a paper and translating a paper uh, have nothing to do with one another. I believe uh, we have to skip the first stage. We have to make our students think in English, uh, navigate information in English. And this is a very uh, different type of format of work. It's what we call immersion, immersion into a new uh, paradigm. A language is a paradigm. What is the format? What do you mean format? Well, it's the method. How do you achieve this? Starting with the fourth uh, university grade, uh, we begin uh, with a very short text that students uh, must compose. And later on in magistrate uh, studies, uh, they uh, move forward and write ever longer and ever more complicated texts until uh, they are pretty much uh, secure in this field. So uh, in a way, um, we combine every time uh, generative function and uh, controlling function. You are welcome to call me or to write an email or to come personally. You are welcome to participate in the state examination. I'm open uh, to any proposals. The 10th of uh, June is the date of the examination. You are all welcome. I'm, tra I'm a trainer of uh, Lomonosov University, a philological department, linguistic department. At uh, the second, the third, and fourth uh, level, our students write their diplomas and course papers uh, in foreign languages. And they uh, defend their theses uh, and papers uh, in foreign languages as well. Now, your students are legal professionals. Uh, they write papers, they study cases. Uh, what is the outcome of uh, your effort? Is it worthwhile? This is a very tricky question. Together with my colleagues, we organize uh, every year an inter-university conference with the participation of a practical uh, lawyer, practicing, practicing lawyers. This is a very important event. The purpose of uh, this event is uh, to give a platform for students uh, to speak publicly, to prepare their papers, uh, presentations in front of uh, international and uh, domestic audience. Uh, this is followed by uh, some sort of appreciation. What? Now, you have asked, uh, what is the uh, practical output of this, practical effect? Well, the type of work that we do in a foreign language, in my case, it's French, uh, would be similar to uh, Russian subject matter. It means that uh, conceptually and practically all those things exist in parallel in France, in the French-speaking world, and in the Russian-speaking world. So the subject matters must be compatible. 
и работа вот этого. Uh, and uh, what we get uh, in the end uh, is an amalgamation of uh, the two worlds. Thank you, Natalia Petrovna. Uh, your time is up. Thank you so much for your answer. Once again, uh, I am looking forward uh, to personal contacts or your emails or calls. Thank you. Distinguished colleagues, we should be focused, focused on the practical aspects of our discussion. Наталья Аркадьевна Дугарцуренова. Uh, experience of using a uh, network based uh, training uh, module. Distinguished colleagues, I hope you can hear me well. I would like to continue the storyline uh, that Natalia Nikolaevna introduced today using a network based training modules in the English language. Well, English language has established itself as the language of uh, science, as a language of global education and uh, in many more areas. Therefore, we uh, have a challenge uh, to master English language as a tool of professional and academic communication. English is also uh, the language that allows uh, to open up, uh, to um, share uh, knowledge and achievements at the national level with the uh, broader world. Uh, to uh, achieve this purpose, we have opened the subject matter, a training matter, uh, which is called English for the purposes of scientific publication. I have uh, pretty much exposed to this subject matter and today I want to share my experience. The challenge uh, as a trainer is uh, to uh, make students acquire uh, these skills. We worked uh, with the students at the fourth level of university training, baccalaureate. This fourth year is a very responsible year for the students. And uh, one of the challenges they face is writing a paper in the English language and defending it in front of a commission. In my department, we dedicate uh, four academic hours a week to this type of training, including only two hours for actual writing of uh, this paper. Another difficulty that we face is to align the uh, texts and the papers with international requirements and standards. To this date, uh, we uh, see that uh, students mostly write their papers, papers initially in the Russian language uh, and then translate them into English. Uh, this is uh, not a very good practice. We want them to write their papers uh, uh, at once uh, in the English language. To do that, they must be uh, familiar with international norms and standards of uh, quotation, uh, referencing, uh, explication, whatever. What I can say is that we face uh, a lot of difficulties. Uh, students don't have enough uh, mastery of uh, the vocabulary, of grammar, of uh, authentic um, scientific uh, phrases or turns of phrases. Instead, they prefer to use calculated on transliterated versions. 
we cooperate uh, with our colleagues uh, with uh, in Moscow in uh, the Hart School of uh, Economics uh, and uh, from other universities. Our colleagues are pretty uh, prolific in writing papers in the subject matter. Many of them, uh, many of this research is done in China. Thankfully, uh, these works exist in the English language, so we try to base ourselves uh, on their inputs as well. Selection of uh, learning material. First of all, we offer uh, to the students a proposal to make a choice of their own. To choose uh, special words, uh, to uh, choose uh, or identify uh, practical phrases and uh, grammatical terms. The material that we worked with uh, referred to linguistic, linguistic knowledge. And uh, the challenge was uh, to find keywords and phrases that uh, uh, would serve as a skeleton, as uh, a uh, points of uh, concentration. We have uh, a huge uh, body of uh, international texts to draw upon, so in that respect we are pretty safe. Now, uh, let me uh, say a few words about the uh, self-access academic writing resource, as we call it, or network training module. The module consists of uh, several uh, sub-modules, uh, which is introduction, uh, the main body of text and conclusions, basically. It is important that every sub-module uh, is built through logical uh, bridges, logical connections with the next sub-module. So it doesn't uh, sound uh, too fragmented. Every rhetorical uh, move and every uh, logical step must be carefully thought through. It must and uh, must be trained, of course. Usually, uh, every student, after he has made uh, his or her choice, uh, must. Uh, give a short explication of uh, his rationale. Uh, then what we do is this the so-called comprehension check. Uh, it is, um, roughly speaking, uh, an exercise whereby uh, a third person would read the text uh, to see how uh, easy it is uh, to understand. The person doing the monitoring uh, would uh, offer remarks, comments, and recommendations uh, to the author of the text. In a way, we uh, get a perfect measurement of the knowledge. This is a very effective exercise because uh, it gives immediate and very efficient uh, feedback. All mistakes uh, would be corrected uh, immediately on the spot. The mistakes, by the way, are pretty typical. Uh, typical for Russian speakers uh, who want to uh, explain themselves uh, in the English language. We try to identify uh, these uh, low lights in uh, the text produced by the students. 
our mo main method is working in the classroom. Uh, we leave very little uh, by way of homework. Uh, the whole work uh, that is involved is just uh, checking and rechecking. Unfor unfortunately, we don't have time to talk about this training model uh, in detail. But I, here is the reference uh, to the article that is pretty uh, detailed. Uh, it explains the rationale for this uh, training model, its basic formats uh, and outcomes. So what uh, are the results of our attempts to integrate our practice in a coherent recommendation? We have made a selection of students who are very actively using uh, the training model as uh, the most difficult. difficult uh, this was followed by a poll of seven questions as to the efficiency and facility of uh, usage. To analyze uh, written uh, compositions, uh, we have uh, used uh, a matrix of uh, big boxes. I will not uh, comment on uh, our criteria of evaluation, just the results. The 10 scale line, 28 uh, papers uh, hit the highest mark, 10, and uh, this was uh, way beyond the 50% of all research papers. We evaluated them uh, on uh, the criteria of uh, language, uh, coherence, time is up. Of course, uh, the language of the source paper is uh, leaving an imprint on their mentality and the practice of using a language uh, and uh, uh, blocks of phrases. The most useful aspects of this training module are listed in this transparency. Informational, linguistic, uh, linguistic practical, and uh, along down, down the line. We also try to compile uh, the low lights or the challenges that the students face. One of them is the verbiage, uh, using too many words to explain a simple thing. So overall, uh, informational, organizational, uh, leadership skills are all uh, amalgamated in this training module. We believe this is a very prospective uh, training module and I highly recommend it to my colleagues. I believe that universities uh, should have a broad range of uh, training models and this uh, uh, would be uh, our contribution Vera Arkadyevna, please, you, uh, your time is up and you're talking too, too fast for the interpreters. So again, uh, this is a good training uh, module uh, to uh, master academic writing. So again, uh, this is the source of papers, uh, bibliography. If you need more information, I stand ready uh, to, to assist. Thank you. Thank you very much. This was a very fascinating, very detailed. I uh, 
would ask you to send us your report. We would like to study it in detail. Thank you so much. We have one question in the chat box. I don't... Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's not a question, actually. It's a big thank you. It's a comment. No questions. Natalia Gennadieva Lavrentieva is our next speaker. My speech is dedicated to the pragmatic potential of Google services. Uh, I pay special attention to preparing students of non-linguistic specialities. I will be talking about one particular digital resource that I actively used in my research while I was working with students. I'm trying to download my presentation. I hope everything is clear. Reading is one of the four basic skills, and they are. It is one of the most difficult skills for a person who is studying a foreign language. It implies reading literature in foreign language and using information from foreign resources. Digital technologies get deeply involved in all spheres of human activity, including education. So preparing students for using foreign materials, using foreign literature is one of the most important aspects of our work. And we are supposed to simplify their work and to emphasize their individual efforts in finding information on foreign language. The active development of digital linguistic education highlights the necessity of improving the process of education, introducing new digital technologies and using new instruments that could be useful and applicable for education. Evaluation of the potential and methodological potential of uh, different digital services is a very important and a very useful priority of our work. One of these digital technologies is a service that was developed by Google team. It's called Talk to Books. It gives an opportunity to find questions, to find answers to questions. And these answers are given basing on the material of on particular phrases taken from thousands of books. All these books are collected all together in one single database. This service, as its creators said, is not the same thing as searching something via Google. The questions are supposed to be asked as if you were talking to a real person. It's not based only on words correlation. So using this digital technology and introducing new methods of imply using it in the system of education is very important. And it requires introducing a particular technology and a particular system that would be used in the educational process. This resource is very useful for personal use. It is a good source for getting information, for finding different resources and practice reading skills. Moreover, this service implies using authentic resources from foreign literature 
that come from interesting books and interesting sources that would be useful for our students. In order to develop a proper and a functional technology of education, it's necessary to emphasize to emphasize some particular practical skills like uh, self-control, correcting one's own mistakes, defining particular correlations and connections, analysis, and many other skills. It's necessary to highlight the process of analyzing the information that a student gets and introducing special technologies for developing analysis skills. We can separate the whole use of this, serv of this uh, service into several particular aspects. It's reading, analyzing, understanding the main idea of the text, and it helps to form complex skills that include different skills from many other spheres that were developed on the preparatory stage. It implies teachers' participation in the educational process, highlights the importance of their role, and also emphasizes the individual work of students. The first stage of work with this resource is the pretext stage when students are supposed to formulate particular questions in a correct way. Then students get answers from these questions that are formed as quotes from different sources. And it implies active, co active work on part of students in terms of their language use On the slide, you can see various questions that we asked our students. We were writing a special research, a special article dedicated to this issue. And these are the questions we asked. So we were trying to find out their attitude to these issues. The next stage is the text stage. So students read particular parts of different texts. They find uh, different quotes that give answers to the questions they asked. This stage is intended to fulfilling particular communicative tasks. The main goal is to understand what is written in a particular text. Here you can see particular examples of exercises and tasks that students have to do. Then goes the next stage that can be connected with work in groups where students are supposed to deliver a speech or a presentation, or writing a literature review It is a good task for students from master's programs. You have two minutes left. I suggest using various digital technologies, different digital boards. They are very useful for work in groups. It was very useful in our own practice. Then we also can organize different polls and quizzes that could check the difficulties that students found. The vast majority of students said that they were interested in this whole process, that they enjoyed this work, that they liked working in groups. They had higher motivation and developed digital technology skills. In some cases, students mentioned that they couldn't formulate questions in a particular format. Also, they highlighted difficulties in 
organizing work in groups in digital format. Maybe they didn't have all necessary skills for working with digital materials or working in group was difficult in general. That's all. Thank you very much. It is very, it was a very interesting report. It was a very interesting speech and this talk to book service is actually a new thing for me. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? I don't see any questions. I have one question concerning the final poll and the results of this poll that you showed. How how do students understand what materials they can and should use for finding answers to the questions they posed? Well, uh, indeed, asking a question in a particular and in a proper way is a very important aspect of working with talk to books service because not all of them understand the principles of how this uh, program works. So we did our best to succeed. I helped our students because some of them didn't manage to fulfill the tasks. It requires using only specific and particular terms that have to be checked and checked carefully. We worked with a big range of students of our universities. So we used uh, the results of this work for writing different articles. It was very useful for our university journals. Well, uh, indeed, it is very difficult to find proper words for asking uh, questions using this service. And we uh, try to explain to our students the most basic principles of formulation. So we chose the best questions and then demonstrated them to other question to other students. So yes, indeed, it requires work on the part of teachers. So yes, the teachers are involved into this whole process. And of course, the possibilities of this resource are very limited. Would like to see some scientific authors, but unfortunately they have only fictional authors, but I think that they are broadening the list of authors, broadening the list of books. There are many books of different genres, actually. And this is a certain challenge for successful educational process. Thank you very much. I would like to ask one question. So you get a reference, you get a link to the book, and can you read the whole book or you can read only some quotes and parts of this text? Yes, of course, you can read the book as a whole. Thank you. So the students can drown in this tons of materials. Thank you. The next speaker from Moscow State University. She will talk about using podcasts in educational activities. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a very rich and active and an interesting program today. I would like to talk about podcasting as a means of enhancing the educational activities of students in teaching a foreign language for special purposes. I will highlight the role of podcasting the educational potential, and I will share our experience, the experience of Moscow State University. Here we go. So podcasts are viewed from the point of their practical use. So it's, we have to evaluate in a proper way the educational potential of podcasting. It helps them, whether it helps them to 
not only to increase and not only to improve their language learning but also to find information for their educational purposes so what podcasts are podcasts are a type of audio programs that are spread via digital technologies via different digital services it is a very simple and a very convenient form of information it is very widespread and it seems to be one of the most functional types of information that can be used by students but unfortunately podcasts aren't actively used for educational purposes in our country uh, first podcasts appeared in about 2015 2016 And um, podcasts can be very useful for creating vocabularies for special pragmatic purposes, for introducing materials on foreign languages that would improve students' efficiency in foreign languages. We have a huge amount of scientific research considering uh, the efficiency and importance of podcasts in educational process as a whole. In particular, one of my works that was dedicated to this issue it also highlights and demonstrates the importance and functionality and efficiency of podcasts. Uh, let me share the most important and the most interesting details of my research show. Uh, I based my research on German Russia a podcast uh, that was created for giving information to Russian users, giving information about German laws and legal system as a general. It is introduced by German speakers, uh, professionals who deal with laws and legal sphere, uh, people from different fields of social and economic um, activities. And it is a very important and a very up-to-date format, as I've already mentioned. Uh, and it is intended not only to give language, uh, not, not only to improve language skills, but also to uh, improve discourse skills that implies analysis of the language forms that are used and the analysis of the content uh, and the structure of the speech of the text and also it gives uh, an opportunity to find information uh, some particular information considering particular topics uh, of legal system of uh, germany of the German legal system. We can be sure that this form encourages this digital dialogue and uh, more than 1,000 users actively use podcasts in their educational uh, activity. And podcasts are very interesting, not only to the students themselves, but also to people uh, who talk to them, who communicate to them, they get interested in the materials that are presented. Uh, we formulate particular tasks and particular scenarios using a simplified version of the German language that gives uh, people who don't have great developed language skills to participate in this project. It's a bit simpler for them. So they listen, uh, while listening to this podcast, they get particular types of information, they develop their speaking skills, listening skills, <laughs> and they use various technologies that help them to find necessary materials, <laughs> it helps them work with the texts. And also it's very comfortable because and very convenient because students can uh, listen to it in whenever they want to. Another podcast, Russian Germany. It consists of a review of uh, articles of the constitution, analysis, on uh, the target language and translation into Russian.
This uh, involves uh, a heavy amount of um, preliminary work, preparation. Uh, you have to study the Constitution, uh, uh, main uh, basic uh, concepts, uh, get a general idea. Uh, this is followed by the analysis of uh, lexical solutions, uh, why and where, this or that uh, lexical turn uh, or turn of phrase uh, was used. However, this uh, analytical uh, effort is very important uh, to uh, develop the skills of uh, political discourse. Every political discourse uh, has a background uh, context behind it. It exists in the framework of legal and social uh, norms of uh, uh, linguistic uh, landscape where it is used. In um, many instances, uh, discourses uh, incorporate uh, several disciplines and subjects, uh, like political and legal, uh, environmental, and so, so forth. A normative context is not uh, strictly fixed. It is uh, in uh, permanent flux. Uh, it is flexible and changes over time pretty quickly. Students have to be prepared for this uh, challenge. This also uh, involves uh, more flexibility in training modules. Uh, these are our contacts. We have plans to continue our podcast. Students believe it is uh, extremely useful and effective. I believe other colleagues have similar experiences. There may be other solutions, but we opted for this one. Thank you very much, Maria Vladimirovna. Any questions? You feel guilty? You feel competition? But how does this uh, podcast fit into the program, the standard university program? Is it an supplement? Is this a, uh, an illustration? This is uh, a podcast which is completely outside uh, the standard curriculum. It's a supplement. It, uh, it involves students that uh, have the motivation to participate. Today we're pretty uh, equipped with materials, with videos. To my mind, this format is very effective in creating a link between uh, the language and the profession. What is lacking, and or rather what is needed, is motivation. Motivation on the part of the students and motivation on the part of uh, trainers. Well, innovation uh, is uh, always born outside uh, standard uh, procedures. Do you have a computer software to back up your board? I think it is possible to have one, but I'm not sure we have it uh, as of today. I know that uh, doing a software for our the training model is very easy, but uh, we don't need it at this moment. 
We don't need any uh, agreement. We don't need any uh, license or uh, secured copyrights. There's plenty of leeway. Therefore, I believe uh, if there is a will, there is a way, as we say. Thank you. Victoria Alexandrovna Skokunova, Moscow State University. Oh, this is a long uh, title. All right. Thank you. Today I want to talk about using uh, the method of uh, developing uh, oral skills among baccalaureate uh, who study language for special purposes online. I will highlight only main points and maybe illustrated with some examples. So uh, the background, theoretical background, we believe uh, active methods of education is uh, uh, the most effective, effective ways to reach the uh, goal. This is especially so when uh, training practical skills. The basic elements of uh, this method have been uh, highlighted by other speakers. These uh, principles, these elements may be uh, shifted, uh, may be um, combined or recombined depending on the final objective and also depending on the pre-existing skills of a given student. The outcome of uh, this active method is always uh, practically oriented, which is good. The active approach also uh, has room uh, to make models of education. Uh, to have enough flexibility to adjust uh, to special needs. This was uh, the uh, approach uh, that was advocated by the Vygotsky, Davidova, Leontieva, Polak, Sondor, Levina, Lazutova, and many others. In other words, the active method uh, is a project method. It's a, this is a um, combination of uh, techniques and uh, practical actions aimed uh, at uh, the student and the trainer to achieve a certain goal, a goal which is important uh, as an outcome of education. The founding father of this method was uh, John Dewey and his followers uh, like William uh, Kilpatrick. In Russia, this research was done by Professor Shatsky. USSR, uh, the Soviet Union, uh, was uh, very advanced in this subject matter. The project consists of several stages verbal stage when the project is introduced the objectives are explained uh, the methods are are also explained and internalized the next step is uh, a transition to video aids Brainstorming is extremely important. Brainstorming uh, means every uh, student has to contribute their proposal. Discussion, uh, the third stage is the discussion of uh, proposals generated during brainstorming session. Hypothesis, distribution of roles, um, outline of the project. Uh, all of these stages uh, uh, must uh, follow one another in a uh, 
strict sequence. And finally, uh, students uh, must uh, evaluate their outcomes. The level of English uh, mastery was B2 slash B2 plus slash C1 on this CFR scale. This level was identified uh, on the outcomes of uh, projects done on the second course of university studies in the Department of Media. Of course, adjustments must be made uh, to the profession or competence that they will choose when working in the larger world of the media. Communicative, uh, communicative competence, uh, creative skills, uh, uh, lexical mastery, uh, subject matter, lifting barriers uh, to uh, psychological barriers to public speaking, work in uh, individually and in uh, pairs or teams. So all of these competences uh, must be prioritized according to the wishes of a given student. I believe this is very important to formulate, to format rather the mindset of the student. To me, the most important thing is to lift the barriers for public speaking. The assignments included writing a script in a slot of uh, allocated time. They had to put uh, their ideas on paper and present it to other students. These are practical examples of teamwork. Good morning, everyone. It's music break. I'm your host, Genius. Get ready for the five minute energy. Tracks, latest news from the music industry, and the interview with the upcoming artist Sabrina Claudia, all here today in five minutes of your time. We'll be starting with the newest single, Blackpink and Selena Gomez Ice Cream. How's your energy level so far? Hope you're getting ready for your day. And right now we're gonna have a quick news rundown. The MTV VMAs were last Sunday and there were lots of memorable, exciting and even awkward moments from the night as it was one of the first in-person award shows since the pandemic started. We can't talk about VMAs with Это одно из, скажем так, заданий, которое было выполнено непосредственно уже в пандемическое время. И, как вы видите, здесь не только студентка рассказывает по той тематике, которую она подготовила. Now, uh, this was a little music clip uh, that we um, used uh, in our studies. It was especially effective during the pandemic, when we uh, were working remotely. Будет представлен только один человек, но тем не менее она имитирует второго спикера. Причем имитирует. Another uh, example would invite a second person, the speaker speaking in an accent with an accent. Podcast I Travel, the first radio program where listeners can become the hosts. The only thing you have to do to take part in this radio program is to call us at 3 p.m. if you're traveling. You can call us every single day and name your coordinates, then tell your breathtaking traveler story. Each month we are going to choose the best story and send a special prize to the winner. To learn more about it, you can go on our site or Instagram page London One 
TRVL. Our studio received a call. Hello, introduce yourself. Hello, I am Ratha Sinti. Oh, hello Ratha. Where are you from and where are you now? Tell us, please. I am from Agra, India, and now I'm in Moscow, in Russia. Oh, that's wonderful, Ratha. And what do you see right now? Now I'm walking in the center of the city, and you won't believe, but there is a lot of snow here. Oh, wow, this is really unbelievable. These were examples of podcasts that we were making with our students. We had time uh, to listen to every podcast uh, of every student. It is important that uh, the students uh, expect uh, their work to be uh, heard and uh, transmitted publicly. Конечно же, также они могут внедрять релевантную лексическую функциональную единицу. Это является одним требованием. И, разумеется, предоставляется им также выбор, потому что, естественно, кому-то может нравиться одна тематика, кому-то может нравиться совсем другая тематика. И также способ представления этой информации с улучшением всех тех умений, на которые они уже имеют данному периоду. И плюс также, если говорить про последний пункт, здесь, возможно, будет, наверное, вопрос... And the final point uh, is uh, a choice of a subject matter. They have to ma match the subject matter with um, the way they are going to present it. I, either it is a Zoom-based uh, broadcast uh, or a uh, YouTube-based broadcast or through uh, other means. Anyway, this uh, is a practical uh, training exercise that the students have to master and have a feeling of. Thank you so much. This is the list of sources. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much. This was a very informative uh, report. Can you download the presentation? I have a question. You've mentioned Cambridge Media UK. Is this the only source based in Cambridge? I think it is. Thank you. Yes. More questions? Let's move on. Irina Nikolaevna Uchekina, Azerbaijan State University. Panglishki Buti? Yes, um, my report is in English, but I will be using Russian. И СП на трех курсах. Первый, второй, третий курс на факультете туризма. В своей презентации я хотел... Well, it is necessary to highlight that the first year students, in working with the first year students, we work on the basic communicative method. On the second course, we use case approach, and on the third stage, regardless of the existing conditions and the digital format of our work, we use the project method. Here you can see the basic points that I would like to highlight in my presentation. The motto of the main thesis of my statement, you can see it in the presentation. These are the words that my students said. It highlights the great importance 
of motivation in the whole educational process. If students have no motivation, you won't get these wonderful words. In September, Um, because of the pandemic, new initiatives were su suggested, the initiatives of creating a conjointed project. It's called Tourism in Different Regions of Azerbaijan. It started in October 2020 and ended in December 2020. Twelve students participated in this project. They started from the third course on the third year of the linguistic faculty. And they participated only in on particular stages and in particular uh, aspects. Um, in particular, they worked with a particular um, touristic zone of Azerbaijan. The main idea is to motivate students to guide them to study tourism in uh, different regions of Azerbaijan to expand the special vocabulary in the tourism speciality in English, to inspire critical thinking, increase analytical competence, and to promote the project on the international portal. This whole work was intended to bring great results and to inspire by the project participants for their further work. We use Life Beyond Tourism, a website, web page. This is an international website, web page that contains various cultural, educational pages and suggests new forms of cooperation and interaction in the internet. And what were the main basic benefits that we got from this cooperation? We found materials that were very beneficial for tourism development in our country. We found all necessary materials and all necessary information and it helped us to create a functioning and an efficient project. We created a special web page for intercultural communication, for communication between people who represent different cultures and different nations. Of course, there are some basic requirements. The first requirement is the importance and the significance of the future research, finding different ways of solving various conflicts and various problems. Moreover, we included practical, theoretical and cognitive significance of the intended results. For example, the practical importance for creating presentations that promote territorial ecosystems in Azerbaijan, organizing different events on different digital and real-life platforms. It consisted of several stages, preparatory, search, analytical and practical work. I suggested the sixth component it is creating portfolios for students that included their everyday day-to-day -day plans, res reports, researches, different materials that they presented, different schemes, video, videos, 
animated materials. Students introduced short films, short movies, and photos. There was an important rule. Every stage of the project had to be accompanied by a specific product, a specific result that included assessment and evaluation. So we assessed our students in the beginning of their work, when they only started, when they suggested their projects, when they gathered necessary materials. On the second stage of their work, when they were somewhere in the middle of their work, when we assessed their critical competence and the analysis that they suggested. And on the third stage, when they created presentations, you have two minutes left. What are the results? You can see them on the slide. First of all, the broadened outlook of our students in the field of tourism. They expanded the vocabulary of the students on tourism topics. They got necessary skills of research, the competence of critical thinking. Also, taught students and they have acquired the skills of working in one team. And the final product was released and sent to the international portal. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time. So I have to be short. But I would like to emphasize the analytical importance. Please remember the time limits. Well, then I will have to emphasize and highlight the key features of the role of teachers in their work. So uh, students and teachers know the basic aspects of face-to-face -face communication. The same things, the same processes happened in digital format. Teachers overlooked the processes they participated in various discussions, they demonstrated sources, they helped to formulate the topics of research and gave additional recommendations. Our students expressed their participation in this way. Our project was highly evaluated by the agency and our university got a certificate on behalf of the international portal. Dear colleagues, unfortunately, I don't have enough time. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And do you have a web link? to this portal, to this web page. Yes, of course, I will send you the link. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Unfortunately, only digital tourism exists right now, but I invite you to visit our country in 2019. Two million tourists visited our country. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next report is by Elizaveta Tikhamirova, the representative of Skolkova. Now, Russian Silicon Valley he is the topic of the research. Dear colleagues, Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity to participate in this forum and to talk to people who think the same. This is 
a wonderful opportunity. I would like to use this chance to tell you about the project that I introduced. It's called Project Based Academic Writing Course. A couple of words about our institute. This is a very young, a very an institute that appeared recently. And I've seen how we've developed. We started only with a small team of seven, and then more and more people joined. It was created as a kind of a connection between science and innovation, as a very important tool for our students' development. Here, in the slide, you can see different aspects of its research, different areas, life sciences, neurology, space. It even includes, includes advanced studies and many, many other fields. It demonstrates the international and multidisciplinary spirit of our research, of our institute. Our colleagues have already mentioned these aspects. I believe this is the most interesting and the most important thing when people from different professional spheres talk to one another, discuss various aspects and organize joint research. English language is the all educational processes are held in English and English English language is actively used in the educational process, all writing materials, all documents are written in English and in Russian, but English is the most often used language in our work. Our educational program is built based on term structure. structure. We have four terms. Independent study period. And there is an independent study period when students can choose different subjects that they would like to pay attention to. Our institute is oriented towards magisters and masters of art, arts for people who get higher stages of education. This year, I paid special attention to organizing different educational processes, different educational programs in online format because of the existing conditions. So this course lasted for three weeks. We had only nine classes. Every class lasted for three hours. In general, we got 36 hours. It included the personal work. In this slide, you can see the curriculum and all questions that we discussed, all topics of our classes. It was a very intensive course. And because of the existing conditions, it was it wasn't an extremely deep course, it was very broad, but here you'll see how we managed with it. We use different interactive instruments. We use Canvas platform that enables us to conduct tests, discussions, etc. And we also used 
Kahoot, Padlet, and two instruments that were new to me. A virtual writing tutor and book creator. As a result, students had to work individually and in groups. Among individual tasks, they had to create reading diaries using a virtual writing tutor tool. I hope that I will show it to you. It helps creating a glossary where your word gets a definition. Students used examples from different materials that they used in their scientific research. Every word is accompanied by an audio that shows their pronunciation. For three weeks, for the period of three weeks, 15 words had to be introduced using this particular tool. Also, we created a bibliography form formatted according to IEEE. Our students wrote abstracts, annotated bibliography, literature reviews, and many other materials. All of these materials were then were later used by students for creating their group projects, and this project was called an ebook. They had to write how to write particular genres of work. And it was intended to help students to get the necessary skills for writing scientific genres, scientific works. And then students had to defend the project in front of the whole class. All instructions concerning creating such kind of uh, text. We followed the existing rules we use the book creator and just have a look at how it looks we have two minutes left i'm almost finished i've always almost finished so here you can see all instru instructions how all materials look here it shows how the basic principles of work of vocabulary use basic instructions. Also, it includes samples of the text from members of the teams and explains how to create a five minute video presentation that involved all participants. That's what we got. We got five books made by five different people. Each one worked on their own books. And let me show you some variants that we got. Next slide, please. This is uh, one of our projects. It is called Results and Discussion. This is a student's work. It is in line with all uh, requirements, uh, with all standards, formats. They've been able to illustrate their work, to reference it. Something I would strongly recommend is academic phrasebook. Very effective. They also uh, integrated uh, video clips and also their own uh, video presentation.
Of course, uh, before they uh, were posted, uh, I checked uh, all of the works myself. The students enjoyed uh, and really appreciated the interactive uh, format of uh, discussion of format of work. They gladly uh, communicated, cooperated. It was very dynamic. As a result, uh, as the outcome, we have a full compilation of a student's work, of high quality work. So this is the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, I will be happy to take them. It's very good that we communicate with uh, each other. Thank you for your very informative uh, presentation and your innovative uh, work. Is this your own idea or you borrowed it somewhere? It's my own idea. No more questions, no questions, brother. Please don't hesitate to call me or write to me. I have a question on the evaluation or validation of work. The product is multimodal. How well prepared were students to borrow uh, material from various media, various uh, sources? A lot of uh, work is compilation rather than uh, acquisition of new knowledge. Well, you know, uh, they were so very well driven, uh, I didn't feel any hesitation on their part. They actually knew uh, quite a bit about, uh, you know, navigating, navigating uh, the technically difficult environment of the internet, of uh, the digital world, but they never used those technical skills uh, to produce uh, products as they did. Well, all along, learning a lot of things. I have a question. Well, thank you for your presentation. You represent one of the leading technical universities. What uh, do you have a comment about uh, a module called Eduman? I never heard about it. No, we never used it. No. There are so many programs around. I will, uh, well, thanks to your hint, I will uh, do some research and try to learn more about the program. Please uh, leave your email. I will leave it in the chat box. Next speaker, Olga Vasilyevna Prokopinsk, Minsk. Belarus. What is the subject matter that you will report on? Uh -huh. Acquisition of uh, technical skills, integral uh, concept of skills. So uh, we are moving on to the strictly linguistic part of our today's discussion. Can you hear me? There's something wrong with uh, the connections. Oh, we'll see as, as we go. Well, thank you so much for the possibility to speak. I represent two universities at once, uh, the uh, State University, Department of Linguistics and Lingual Didactics, as well as uh, Minsk State University. I, uh, I'm a professor of both. So let's uh, speak about the uh, integral meaning of terms. 
является компетентностный подход. National higher education is driven or is based by an approach of competencies. This means that students have to be both adequate uh, academically, uh, socially, and professionally fit or competent. This uh, achievement is possible only with good motivation and responsibility. Context-based education is the mainstream in our university. We apply this approach to all professional training. Contextual education means that the model can be adjusted to technical subject matters. The subject of education enables the students to acquire knowledge in a foreign language to be uh, able to navigate uh, terminology, uh, phrases, uh, and the larger texts. They are also uh, capable at the end of their education uh, to use uh, professional uh, speech and uh, professional codes. These are main elements of professional uh, discourse and professional exchanges. Any speech generated in a communicative situation is based on uh, certain codes. The list of professional communicative situations uh, does exist. Uh, and the purpose of this list is uh, to go through all of them. This requires an analysis, a linguistic analysis of all professional areas. For instance, specialists in technical aspects of uh, building automobiles uh, requires uh, design information, aesthetic information, ergonomical information. We are able to combine in our module professional training and linguistic ways of uh, professional expression. Professionals uh, or being a professional means uh, having qualifications and having qualifications means uh, using the language that these qualifications require. Therefore, we believe that uh, we must uh, start with uh, training students in using the terminology special uh, lexique uh, including uh, the uh, learning the meaning of the term the meaning of the term may be uh, restricted or may be very broad it is important uh, to be able to feel comfortable within this shifting world of meanings For instance, uh, in case of a breakdown of a vehicle, the specialist uh, may use such term as valve, uh, uh, oil leak, uh, empty tank, uh, things like that. They have to use uh, these terms, not strictly speaking in their uh, technical uh, sense, but uh, in a broader sense as a reason for breakdown. In other words, uh, terms are sometimes used as an integral characteristic of a situation. They uh, kind of accommodate all other subordinated uh, terms and uh, sub-situations. Students must be able to build an integrated model of a term, for instance, along main functions of uh, the automobile. 
документ, объединяя свою структуре чувственное представление схемы. This means uh, several layers of meanings: emotional, intentional, and functional. Intentional um, level uh, includes uh, several sublayers. Basically, it uh, means uh, functional uh, objectivity of a given uh, detail of a given uh, spare part. Integral meaning is uh, volatile. Therefore, students must be able to adjust their models uh, according to the context. Professional integral texts mean texts that uh, combine themselves several layers of meanings including uh, intentional uh, objective uh, and uh, basic this is a screenshot of uh, professional text it includes verbal text, images, static images. And there are also links uh, to additional sources, uh, links to pronunciation, to explanations of meaning, to uh, and references to authors or engineers. Integration of meanings by students is a very effective tool to enhance understanding, to build analytical skills, to analyze the meaning of a given term in a broader context. These texts uh, must be able uh, to offer information that is uh, student friendly. Every student uh, builds his uh, or her own model in a foreign language, of course. Uh, The models must be understandable and comprehensible to other students. Thank you so much. You are well within your time limit. Any questions? Proposals, recommendations? Yes, please, please switch off the presentation. What is the way to integrate this integrated model into the uh, education process? It has uh, an electronic version. The electronic version is uh, very easily accessible. Every text has an instruction, step-by-step -step instruction. могут мне например отправляют вконтакте но может быть любая форма на почту и так далее изначально работа initially uh, students uh, work with the model uh, in the classroom uh, with the teacher later they do it independently do you have a terminological uh, short list? Yes, uh, we do have a short list. Questions?
Good luck. Good luck. Ирина Валерьевна Соловьева, Тверской Ир, Ирина Валерьевна Соловьева. Коммуникативный подход. Коммуникативный подход. И это Evasion English. Название напомнило мне мой опыт почти. Ой, не I remember the times when I was a trainer uh, in another university. One of uh, the students said, I will never fly because I uh, know how they are done. Oral speaking skills, uh, uh, the subject matter of uh, your report. I would like to thank you. Thank you for the organization of this conference. I'm very glad to see you all. Many authors of textbook that we are using in our educational process are present here. I I teach my students to use professional and technological uh, language. I started teaching them the language of aviation, air the language of professional air communication. The students are very motivated. That have that have chosen a very difficult specialization. And they want to work in the field of civil aviation and have to upgrade their language skills. Special courses have been created and they come there to upgrade their language skills. Groups are very different. Some of them are mixed, some are very advanced. Some people start from the zero level, they have no English skills. But anyway, because of their great motivation, thanks to this motivation, they work very hard and achieve progress. In this slide, you can see the fundamental, the most basic information about this course. There are, it consists of 250 hours. 250 hours are dedicated to the vocabulary and lexis, and 250 hours are dedicated to grammar of the English language. Unfortunately, of the problems with the general English skills, poor knowledge of grammar structures, poor communicate, communicative skills, influence the educational process in general. And teachers are supposed to create special exercises, special materials that would help students to improve their speaking skills, including uh, particular lexic, uh, lexical measures from and vocabulary from the aeronautical sphere. As you can see, teacher's qualification is very high and there exists a certain disproportion between the academic um, qualifications for teachers and between the practical skills uh, in the aeronautical sphere and field of air transport engineering. Uh, 
yes, and in said. many cases the the basic education of future specialists in this field is conducted somewhere abroad the courses connected with the aviation english are conducted in foreign universities and then they come to these courses and they have to update their knowledge as we can see specialists in this field uh, require high professional competence i mean um, aeronautical competence and not linguistical first and foremost it's necessary to highlight the importance of the personality of the linguistic personality of the student the key factor is the existing are the existing conditions and environment in which future pilots work because these conditions influence the way they use the language and they communicate so on the one hand the whole process of communication depends on the environmental conditions but at the same time in cases of emergency uh, it requires uh, communication regardless of the existing environment and certain rules and proceedings so if we're talking about um, preparing our students for their future work preparing students for their future career we have to remember about preparing students for communication in general and explaining proper ways of explaining uh, proper ways of explanation proper ways of presenting information but at the same time in many cases this uh, practice is broken uh, in the context of teaching in the process of explaining some um, aspects of information Students should avoid remembering some cliches and phrases in order to be able to communicate in necessary situations. So this whole process is not only about learning some phrases and cliches by heart. Uh, what requires special attention on behalf of the workers is the formulation of certain stereotypes considering some formal uh, information some formal knowledge concerning the weather conditions concerning the details of the flights the temperature light vision visibility and any other aspects of the this um, of their professional activities so remembering order and particular structure of the phrase is extremely important in this context on the one hand, it simplifies the process of communication, but on the other hand, in case of emergency, this whole structure, the whole structure of the message can be broken and cause certain kinds of misunderstanding and in many situations when such um, emergency situations appear people can got lost because of poor language skills and because of the existing cliches that they've remembered by heart so preparing them for real life activity is extremely important and we always have to remember about that we have introduced uh, several assessment uh, requirements that imply assessment of students' skills of free speech, of uh, communication, and their knowledge of professional vocabulary. This is what we call the fourth working level. Особенности курса 
what are the most important particularities of this course is that it is based on the linguistic aspect of the whole educational process because it play, pays a special attention to the language itself because forgetting the language and remembering and avoiding additional practice damages the overall knowledge and skills of our students we can also divide the styles of education into several levels Statistics plays an extremely important role in this whole educational process because this plays an important role in their practical activity. Future pilots require special knowledge considering the language of professional communication, some particular codes and structures. The stylistics requires special attention on behalf of the teachers because in many cases when students don't have and don't have required specialization specialization and language skills they can move or the other stylistic register, the more colloquial phrases. And it also influences the overall working process of their professional activity. The whole activity, the whole professional activity is defined by particular structures and forms, some particular forms of vocabulary and lexis that actually influence the overall activity of uh, pilots all action all pilots actions require agreement with the aeronautical administration and it requires constant contact with the representatives of this of these special um, aeronautical services You can see particular contexts in which communication takes place. The most basic stages of flight follow one another and they a certain structure of flight exists and it is reflected in speech and in communication. As you can see, it involves a huge lexical field and it implies special opportunities for teachers and students. Grammar actually works in a bit different way in the aviation English. The main emphasis is the most important elements are explaining particular aspects of flight, some data, some precise information. So in many cases, grammar serves for this purpose and it works differently. But this whole work is based on the statistical principle. We can't highlight the phonetic aspect because this whole process of communication is executed using special technological devices and in many cases some technological troubles can appear and people have to be prepared to deciphering the 
information that is presented and defining the meaning of the original messages they get. And developing the listening skills is extremely important in this overall process. And one of the most important conclusions that I can make is that teacher has to have linguistic competence is not only um, competences in the field of aviation, because they have to introduce particular uh, knowledge of the language in general in order to build linguistic co competence of the future pilots and workers of the aeronautical field. And it actually offend, affects uh, security and normal functioning of the aeronautical system in general. And students appreciate uh, teachers' activities in this field. They appreciate their work and are very thankful. Thank you very much. Thank you for your speech. Unfortunately, the sound quality was very poor. So if you have any questions, ask them via chat and in written form. This also highlights the scale of tasks that we face, that people who teach face. Of course, this implies great work. Thank you very much. We have two speeches left. They are prepared by groups. One here from Tallinn, from Estonia. Dear colleagues, thank you very much. We are very happy to welcome you. And I would like to say that we'll be talking about different methods of individualization of the educational process um, based on the textbook of Russian as a foreign language. We'll talk about school education, students from 10th and 11th grades. And the main topic of our research is the necessity of individualization, of the individual approach. This problem is necessary because the groups that learn Russian as a foreign language can be very diverse and very different. Pupils can have different levels of knowledge. Some of them don't know Russian at all. Some of them can speak Russian, but they can't write properly. So many problems concerning the individual individualization of this whole course appear. Same materials have to be explained in different ways according to the level of knowledge of our students in accordance with their cognitive abilities. Uh, as I've mentioned, uh, all students have very different level of Russian, of the Russian language, and they have various capacities and different abilities. And first of all, understanding their level is very important. But at the end, we have a single format, a single requirement and a single assessment method. method. So all students should have similar language level at the very end of their educational process. This differentiation helps to make the educational process much more functional. And it all depends on the level of knowledge that students have on their cognitive and communicative type. We use this approach in creating a special textbook for schools 
is a textbook of the Russian language as a foreign language and it takes into account the differences in their language level. Uh, uh, in one word, this is an example of a variable approach to uh, learning Russian. Uh, the reality uh, of uh, today's education uh, is uh, very much uh, oriented towards immediate post-educational future. As they leave school, uh, future students uh, leave uh, their, the status of their native language as a sort of quasi cultural. They think they already speak as an educated and cultivated person. We should mainstream this thinking into our programs. The next factor to be accounted for is general knowledge. All children have different levels of general knowledge and uh, this uh, textbook allows for individual uh, differences to be taken into account. Uh, different uh, mastery of the language, uh, different attitudes toward information, uh, cognitive and uh, communicative uh, types. The textbook contains uh, different and uh, various uh, graphical, textual and other references. The textbook will include uh, assignments of a productive type. The school children have uh, themselves uh, to uh, create, uh, generate a communicatively uh, viable text. They are given a certain amount of uh, materials that they should base themselves on. And based on that material, uh, they have to generate a text. Principle number four, all uh, texts in the textbook, all assignments in the textbook uh, are purpose oriented. For instance, uh, texts about the healthy lifestyles, uh, uh, practical hacks, uh, recipes, uh, instructions, uh, for instance, what to do uh, uh, to help a uh, wounded person, recommendations uh, to study languages or sciences. The next uh, challenge is to develop a, a method that would uh, allow for self-education. It would enable uh, school children uh, to continue education on their own to uh, mine uh, necessary information from a variety of sources. The assignments are built in a way that requires a student to navigate many sources of information. Another principle is uh, indiv individualized, uh, tailor-made approaches to education. This means taking into account their general knowledge, uh, their linguistical skills, and so forth. Principle number seven, or challenge number seven, uh, to build a linguistic uh, knowledge, uh, cultural knowledge, com culture competences, social comp competencies in uh, uh, the countries of their interests, in this case, Russia and Estonia. Another principle is assignments uh, that uh, require for self-criticism, self-reflection, and self-analysis, especially uh, in when it comes to linguistic and communicative element. Uh, 
the uh, textbook starts with the scale of assessment uh, of uh, self-assignments. This is a European scale, uh, so they are perfectly in, uh, in line with the best practices. Principle nine. Interactive assignments. These are very important because they engage many students at once. Students, uh, school children uh, begin to learn from one another. They also monitor each other's performance. Then visual and auditive uh, uh, support. Uh, these are included as supplements. Next principle. Techniques that uh, require support from uh, internet-based resources. It means uh, that uh, school children have to start with the internet. Principle 12. Taking into account and alignment with the European standards, uh, linguistic uh, standards, and step by step progress uh, towards uh, new progressive scales. And finally, the uh, systemic view of uh, communicative and uh, linguistic material. This means that every element of uh, communi communicative material must be adequately used uh, to bring uh, a message across. The linguistic system should be a combination of many elements and exist as a complex. Grammatical tables at the end of the uh, textbook uh, are simply an aid uh, to help formulate uh, this matrix. The textbook enables uh, arriving at different solutions uh, on the basis of the same material. The assignments may be differentiated uh, by uh, final outcomes. The textbook is uh, oriented on two types of uh, school children. Prepared students uh, that uh, have initial abilities and uh, completely new students that never undertook such assignments. For example, we give a text, uh, variant one, uh, read the text and uh, underline words that are key to its understanding. Variant two, uh, what uh, is the main idea of the te text? Relate in a uh, couple of short sentences. Findings or conclusions. The new landscape, educational landscape, requires uh, new creative approaches uh, to textbooks. Textbooks must be motivational. In our case, uh, this is a textbook of Russian for foreign students. And finally, uh, a picture of the front page of this book. Thank you for your attention. I will be happy to take your questions. Yes, I have a question. Using Russian language uh, for professional pur purposes in Estonia. Is uh, this, is there a need for that? Yes, there's huge uh, need for Russian language as a means of professional communication. In every case across the country, Russia comes second next to the English language. They are very close, uh, very close behind. 
тоже отвечать. Спасибо большое. Есть вопросы еще, коллеги? More questions? В таком случае, спасибо большое. Thank you again. Тони, удачи вам. И наши последние докладчики. And our final uh, reporter. Мгимо университет, Москва университет. Спасибо большое, Елена Борисовна. Профессор Павлюк и профессор Анисимова. Спасибо. Скриншот, пожалуйста. Глубоко уважаемые коллеги. Terminology used in humanitarian sciences, uh, individual approach uh, tailored by, uh, the, professor, by, by uh, the trainer. We have uh, talked a lot uh, for about um, training languages for professional purposes. A foreign language uh, in general and or for professional purposes is not enough. Uh, people have to know a foreign language uh, which is professionally oriented. Call it whatever you want. We have a classification that has its uh, numerical code. About 90% of new words uh, is generated in special fields. The proliferation of the terminology in special areas uh, way exceeds uh, their generation in, in the general language. Uh, we know that uh, any uh, area of knowledge is systemic. And uh, any system is underpinned by its own language. Therefore, learning a language in general and uh, learning a language for specific purposes, special purposes, is a, a challenge in itself. And this includes uh, learning new terminologies. Today we will uh, uh, talk um, rather about the trainer, the personality of the trainer. The trainer is a central figure in uh, training in general and in lingu language training in particular. A professor's mind is not an empty bottle. It's a torch that has to be uh, uh, kept aflame. Today, uh, this uh, is uh, none uh, less true than it uh, was 300 years ago. Albert Einstein said that uh, a trainer's a talent is a talent uh, of motivation. Here, we would like to uh, offer a special uh, approach to this challenge. Uh, today, pan the pandemic uh, has uh, introduced uh, corrections uh, to the uh, role of uh, the trainer. We have uh, less uh, personal contact, face-to-face -face contact. Now, we want to suggest an approach that would uh, bring in additional information about uh, the terminology study. When I was uh, a young student a long time ago, uh, we had this uh, type of film, Science uh, at the Service of Mankind. So uh, let me demonstrate to you an approach uh, to bring together the human approach and the mechanical approach. Uh, let's begin with uh, the native language. I think it is very interesting to know that Mikhail Ivanovich Karamzin introduced uh, many words into the Rus Russian language. And so many more. The terms are in Russian. Mikhail Vasilyevich Lomonosov was a word maker. He uh, enriched the Russian language uh, with uh, thousands of new words, uh, equations, a thermometer, 
Carter, square, geometrical figures, Gogol was uh, also a contributor to the Russian language. Dostoevsky was uh, someone who contributed to the Russian language a lot, uh, including the term the White Knights. There were many terms to describe uh, the White Knights, but only Dostoevsky's term, the White Knights, uh, lived on. Also, you saw the word uh, prospect uh, in uh, our today's uh, understanding. Some solutions uh, were so effective that uh, we take them for granted. Chekhov was active in word formation, in coining uh, new usages. So this, uh, to many, is uh, real news, and we see that uh, uh, many uh, cultural figures uh, contributed uh, to the uh, body of the uh, Russian language. Same goes for English. It is uh, very interesting uh, to find out that Shakespeare was a major contributor to the English language. It was Shakespeare who enriched uh, the English language that are taken for granted. Uh, it is simply uh, impossible to imagine uh, today's English without that vocabulary. So now let's move on uh, to, to discussing the role of the trainer in uh, explaining uh, terms from the humanities. Humanities include philosophy, literature, geography, law, politics, and so on. Well, literature. This is such a term, light motive. You all uh, are familiar with the word. Its origins are somewhere beyond literature, but today it is widely used in uh, Cinematology in the cultural culturology. The term was first coined by Ingmar Bergman. Initially, he made a compilation of light motives of different uh, musical uh, pieces, uh, uh, like the Battle of Nibelungen uh, and uh, other musical pieces. So this was a uh, term from the area of music. Thomas Mann was the first to take it out uh, from uh, a strictly uh, musical context and into a broader context. Film studies, cinematography uh, was a term that was uh, coined by Brothers Lumiere in 1890. Another film studies term, blockbuster. You have one minute left. Blockbuster is uh, even uh, recognizable in the Russian language. However, it uh, came from the military. It was coined first in 1942, uh, meaning a bomb that would destroy a whole block of buildings in the city, in London. Boycott uh, was a proper name, personal name. First, uh, it was used in 1988. Genocide, a political sciences term. In 1945, uh, the General Assembly of the United Nations adopted an international convention 
to prohibit the genocide and to punish genocide. It was understood as a crime that uh, is a violation of international law. The author of uh, the uh, the author of this term was Rachel Lemkin of Duke University. It means uh, the annihilation of a people of an ethnic group. The term uh, had to live 50 years to become uh, a household uh, term uh, in every European language. Well, we all know ethnic cleansing, lynching, uh, ethnic cleansing is a relatively new term uh, that was coined in 1992. terms in, uh, in the sphere of arts. Most of the terms used in that area are transformations uh, from the general language. It, over time and uh, during the process, terms uh, lose their initial meaning and acquire new meanings. Breakfast piece. This means uh, an artistic, uh, picturesque uh, genre that uh, is uh, used to describe uh, uh, a period in uh, in Holland. Masterpiece, a very old term. It uh, initially referred to a, a final period of studies of a student when uh, the student had to produce an artifact to prove his skills. Uh, one, one more minute, please. Renaissance, a very interesting term. It uh, emerged in the 16th century. It was coined by the first art critic who uh, gave a name to a current fanciful trend. In uh, later, one century later, the term was extended to cover the whole Asia of artistic development in the Middle Ages. We uh, believe that uh, supplementary knowledge uh, is not a good thing in itself. It opens new horizons and uh, it makes education fun and enjoyable. Thank you. Звук я включил, но с камерой ничего не проблемы. Поэтому вы даже не говорящую голову видите, а только мой голос. Спасибо большое. Was, is very informative and very useful for our practice. I hope that the results of this conference are fruitful and will be used in your further scientific work. It was a great pleasure for me. It was very useful. It's a pity that we can't meet in real life. We have a couple minutes left. If you have any questions or if you 
would like to say to add anything you're welcome thank you very much it was extremely interesting thank you I would like to thank the participants and the people who organized this meeting for this wonderful format, for this wonderful opportunity, for this opportunity to meet enthusiasts. And I would like to ask a technical question. Unfortunately, we don't have opportunity to be present at the same time in different in different places at the same time. So I would like to have an opportunity to listen to our other statements, to other speeches and reports. Yes, they all were recorded. So I hope we will have. Yes. So We'll have links, but uh, it requires some time. And uh, as I understand, we'll have an opportunity to see the presentations too. Yes, some of them were already downloaded and you have an opportunity to find them in the chat below. Thank you very much for your participation. And I suggest closing as a sign of being thankful. Thank you very much. We expect further cooperation.